Medina, CEO of Island Rose.
what we did is we outsourced our, our website. We didn't host it from the very beginning. In fact, I can still remember my first hosting plan was twenty-six dollars a month. Uh, we outsourced our logistics, which is our topic today, and we outsourced our payment. We didn't try to invent some sort of a payment gateway, some sort of wallet. Some sort of, we, we didn't do that. We outsourced it. So, and we had very minimal uh, purchases, and we bought one. Just one computer, and that computer was uh, manned by myself. So that's the way we set it up. Uh, thank God we didn't have so much money, so I didn't have to go through the experience of uh, spending and then having my my money lost in the, the process. So, so the, the challenges we had, uh, we we had to convince the couriers to take our business. Remember, this this time uh, the couriers basically were delivering. Uh, just physical uh, packages and mail and bank statements and all these things. So it's a big challenge for us. Uh, we have to develop our products to be deliverable, which is, I think, uh, a, lot, a lot of small enterprises, that's what they should be concentrating on now because they don't have to convince the couriers. Uh, today, the couriers have uh, uh, plans for, for, you know, they have, uh, they have services for e-commerce companies. So they should be concentrating on de developing products that can be delivered. Uh, during that time, we had a problem with the sophistication of the uh, courier services because they just weren't geared for the commerce. Uh, of course, the technology and logistics challenge, like I mentioned, uh, we didn't even have any computers. Uh, we were dealing with farmers. We didn't have a customer service uh, 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 department in, in, in our Okay, so. Uh, when we first approached the courier, uh, I think Rene from LBC knows this, we were rejected by all of them. No one wanted to deliver our products because it's highly perishable. They didn't know what it was. It was a big box. And uh, it's just it was not in the radar of the logistics company. So everyone rejected us. The only reason why I got into it, because a friend of mine was starting a courier company. Uh, he was in a freight forwarding business. He was starting a courier company. And, uh, and he did me a favor. He said, I'll be his first client. He eventually closed down uh, after like two or three years. And when he closed down, I had an account sort of a, of a size that, that would be already be attractive, attractive to the couriers. So we talked to all of them, and now we keep uh, three of them, our biggest of which is uh, LBC. Our stuff. Okay, now, how did we convince them? Well, well basically, uh, I'm talking for, for the entrepreneurs here who want to go into e-commerce and then want to leverage logistics companies. I'm talking in, in, in behalf of the, the guys here who are like that. Uh, you know, we, we, we professionalize our staff, we, we organize ourselves, we, we have to present to the players so that they would believe our business model. Now, uh, if you're a simple retailer now, I think uh, the couriers have programs for you already, but if you're going to something new, uh, you need the courier's uh, uh, help. You, you're going to need to, to prove to them that, that, of course, you're a credible business and it's worth it for them to go visit your office, pick up your stuff and deliver them. Uh, so we had to, yeah, of course, we had to go to that. Uh, that we created packaging so that it's comfortable for our couriers to deliver for us. We didn't, we didn't have custom packages made. We asked them, what, what kind of packaging should we do so that we can deliver for us? So we have to make the adjustment, and we still do it today. Uh, I think, uh, for example, for LBC and the players that we work with, they, they, they can testify that we're the ones who adjust. Because we want them to be comfortable working with us. Uh, we're a small company, I, of course, you know, you, you know the, the logistics companies, the are gigantic companies, they want to be. You, what you want is for them to be comfortable to work for you, not keep on demanding stuff, not, you know, things like that. So, so we also fix our process and we're very flexible to, to, to adjusting to what they need, uh, what they need from us. Well, we built our infrastructure so that it works with the courier company. We, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we, we asked them questions on, on how they work, uh, what would work for them, that would work for us, and then we built our, our system around that. 
we didn't, uh, the reason why we were able to take off is because we don't ask anyone to adjust. We were willing to, to work for it. Uh, we go as far as even, you know, uh, provide information that's useful to them in the order that they want it. And we, uh, for some careers, we even print the uh, airway bills for them. So it's faster than we would at all because they stick it on the box. Like that. We treat our suppliers, all of our suppliers, not just our logistic companies as uh, partners. We, uh, we make it comfortable for them to, to work with us. Uh, for the couriers, we give them their own processing area, especially during Valentine's, Mother's Day. They have a place in our farm, they have food, they have a place to plug the computers, they have internet access, all these things. Uh, we, we make it easy for them to, to convert our information to something that they can use to deliver. Yeah. Uh, we, we also adapt their tracking systems and all, all, all the things that we need. So we're a very quiet client. We just, uh, we just work with them. Uh, I hardly talk to my couriers anymore because it just works uh, uh, seamlessly. We, we meet probably once a year. If there's anything new with them, if there's anything new with us. Uh, so it's a very, very smooth uh, relationship. Uh, we've been working with, for example, they have for like 12 years. 12 years. So. Okay, um, again, uh, we basically work with them. We, we don't treat them as suppliers, we treat them as a partner. Uh, of our business, and, and whenever we need something, uh, we, we just talk to them. Uh, again, it's a, it's a very simple thing. Okay. Now, why do we do this? Okay. We do this basically to build our, our influence on them, because the easier it is to work with them, the more they, they would like to. So, you know, we think of them as an essential part of our business, especially if you're going online. Uh, when we say logistics company, it's not separate. It's like if you're a physical store, rent is not separate. You don't treat them as a separate, uh, separate sort of supplier. It's, it's uh, in your business, and that's how we treat our careers. We, it, it's an essential part. When we think of a product, when we think of pricing, the uh, logistics is already built in. When we think of a product, we always think, how are we going to deliver it? And how are we going to convince the couriers to deliver it for us? And uh, what packaging will we use so that so that the couriers will be comfortable with it? That's how we think of products. Uh, uh, we have standardized boxes uh, to deliver so that we don't even get coated a different rate uh, for, for our products. Uh, actually, if you ask LBC, they probably don't even know which products in the box is in the box anymore because we standard boxes. Uh, we have like four or five, uh, and all our products fit in those. Plus, we use uh, standard LBC boxes also. We don't try to invent a new packaging and ask them to put us a strange, uh, sh strangely shaped package. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what we do. And uh, uh, we believe that the more profitable they are with us, the, 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 more, the, the more they would like to work with us. Uh, that's why we also maintain just a few partnerships that we've, we've maintained for a very long time. Uh, I, I believe our, our major careers, we have three. Uh, we have an uh, alternative just, just for quick deliveries, and then we have just three major careers we work with. We don't, we don't spread ourselves too thin. We make sure that, that they have a good amount of business from us. Uh, again, we're not a very large business, but at least uh, you know, we were able to give, give a good business relationship. reason for this is, of course, we want to have also some influence over our, our suppliers. And the more influence you have, the more options you have as well. We're able to talk to them and, and, and ask them for special uh, treatment, of course, because we have a good uh, We're able to get a lot of other evidence, a lot of people who post uh, stuff to us. Uh, although, like I said, we, we try to maintain just, just a small number. It keeps things simple. And uh, you know, it gives us a better working relationship with, with everyone. So what happened was, uh, by the year 2000, 16 years ago, we achieved nationwide delivery with a reasonable price. And I think this is why people like buying from Island Rose. And I think by 2004, we surpassed our largest wholesale client, which means, at least to me, our online business had become the largest uh, retailer of flowers in the country. 
maybe the, the name at that time was not as uh, loud because most of our clients at that time were overseas Filipino workers. But in volume, we already beat our largest wholesale client and being the largest supplier of uh, roses in the country, then terrible, there's no industry, uh, there's no industry uh, uh, figures, but by 2004, I would have assumed we had beaten the biggest uh, retailer in the country. So what, so what does that mean for, for the startup conglomerate con and conglomerates that uh, started at the same time as us? Well, they're both closed, uh, which makes uh, Island Coast the longest running e-commerce retailer in the field. So uh, I just learned that the, the last of the uh, startups closed, I think, two or three years ago. I just learned it uh, two weeks ago. So, because it was arguable which of us started in the year two, uh, 1999, right? So, you know, one would claim we're the first, another would claim we're, uh, we would claim, of course, we're the first. But since all of them are closed, at least I can lay claim to the uh, longest running uh, e-commerce site in the world. Uh, we've had, uh, now the result of this is we've had, of course, continuous growth uh, through our 16 or so odd years. Mod modest, I think, but, but consistent growth. So we try to stick only to online payments. Uh, we don't do national delivery, and we're not going to charge a recipient of flowers money, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we have great customers. I have uh, 70,000 in my mailing list. I have 40,000 subscribed to my newsletter. We talk to them regularly. They regularly order from us. And they really keep us uh, going. Uh, I think we've contributed to education a lot. I do this stuff a lot. Uh, and of course, the case studies. Um, we've had a lot of awards. And we've diversified into other products, such as gifts. And we're, we're, we're really looking into a lot of other uh, uh, Businesses in the gifting uh, industry. So we're going to take a look at that for the next uh, few years. And uh, I think the most rewarding is uh, by convincing the couriers to do this uh, such a long time ago, I think companies, uh, big and small, use the same, the same system that we convinced the couriers of many, many years ago. Uh, the, 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 the idea that was so alien to, to couriers uh, in the year 2000, I think, is basically the, uh, what, what is a very regular uh, business practice nowadays. And uh, that, that, that makes us very happy to, to, you know, to at least be a part of the, uh, the history of e-commerce. Uh, so that's it. So, so